God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. So we will read today from John's Gospel, chapter 14, and I'm going to read verse 2 as we set the stage for this topic in my father's house. And so Jesus speaks these words. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. And as I thought about these words that my Lord and Savior spoke to his disciples, starting as he opened chapter 14 of the book of John, asking their heart not to be troubled, but to believe in him. And then he goes on to say to them, I have a father. And in my father's house are many mansions. And as we translocate these words into our experiences. And I began also to reflect on my own father's house. And a lot of us here today, we came from our different father's house. <laughs> and in our different father's house are different experiences. For some you would say like Jesus that in your father's house there are many masters. Uh, others would say in my father's house are no masters. <laughs> uh, and for others, their father's house full of need and want and struggles through life. And for some, we dare not even say in my father's house because we never had one. And so whatever experience you're coming from today, you ought to be confident that you have a father in heaven. A heavenly father who is always the father of the fatherless and the father of all fathers. And so Jesus made this statement with so much emphasis and I hope that we can make the same for ourselves. But if you're here, male or female, and you're not able to express such positive words of emphasis, this period in time may be a moment of strong reflection for you. A reflection of a father lost, reflection of a father that was never there, reflection of a father who was never a father to you. For some, it's a moment of rejoicing. You have had a good life. And we must not forget that there may be others who don't rejoice today, who are not happy today. And like I said, it is not about what is in this world. Or where you're coming from is where you're at today. Whether you live in your biological home or you live in an adopted family. Or for some who move from one home to the other. We all come to the same intercession. A place with God. And that is why our salvation becomes very important. And that gives us hope in this world. And I never forget what Paul says that if my hope in the Lord is in this world alone, then I am of all men most miserable and to be pitied. And therefore, every good Christian learn to live a life that transcends this world and this earth. And to look up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And be encouraged by these words of Jesus. Whether I came from no home, I came from some home, I 
came from good home. But today I am in the Lord. And I can say boldly that in my father's house are many mansions. For if it were not so, I would have told you. And I can tell you today that in my father's house are many mansions. So be encouraged this morning. And for all the men who are here seated today. Our lives sometimes goes through the thick and the thin of life and working hard to meet social and societal expectations. And I'm reminded of a story by a minister of God who had a wedding that afternoon and had left home and laundered his suit and ready for prayer for the bride later that day. And he left home that morning, like some of us who have to multitask and do a lot of things as men. Left home that morning with his short, because there was other events in the morning, which didn't require him to be all dressed up. And so he had a shot. And then he went out and grabbed his suit and his suit jacket and left for the church. Came to the church, did all the other things that he was doing and multitasking like all of us. And it was 10 minutes to the wedding and he pulled up the suit uh, hanger and took off the outer covering and then the inner covering and there was no pants. No suit pants. <laughs> and he needs to be in the church hall in 10 minutes. And then panic, you couldn't go to uh, the wedding with a suit jacket and some short pants, right? <laughs> it would look odd. <laughs> and then he panicked and called his wife and there was no response. His wife was doing other things. Call around, nobody would pick up the phone at that time. But thank God there was somebody at the church and he frantically said, um, I don't have a suit pants. And I need to be at the wedding in five minutes. He was directed to the missionary room and found some pants and tried them all and found one that fit. And that saved the day. I said that to say that a lot of us are involved in so many things and sometimes we find ourselves in crisis situation where we need to call on Christ. And another story of uh, a man who had recently learned how to swim and was swimming good. And so on a Saturday, nice Saturday, like yesterday, took a trip with the wife and wanted to go boarding. And they all got in the boat and all the men too. And it, uh, ladies, don't try this at home, what I'm about to say. Don't forget what I started. The man had just learned how to swim and was good at it. And so they got in the boat and every man, like you and me, got in and their wives and, and sailed in. And then in the midst of them was a rich man who offered a million dollars to every single person who could swim from where, where they were to shore. And everybody now, like Peter, watching the waves and the wind, who's going to go first? All the men, who's going to go first? And there was nobody bold to get in the water. And then this man's wife pushed him. <laughs> and then he got in. And now he's in. And now he has to swim. And all the men jumped in and he swam and he won the prize. And so coming back and said to his wife, well... I didn't know I could. I was afraid to get in. And the, but eventually I just got in. And the wife said, well, I gave you a little push. <laughs> uh, those of us who are married, you know how sometimes your wife gives you a little push. And sometimes some push. 
Uh, that's why I said don't try it at home. If the man doesn't know how to swim, don't push him in the water. Because he might drown. And as we return to that reflection of Jesus. In my father's house are many mansions. And you consider many who were fathers in running homes in the Bible. We can go through a catalog of them. But I wanted us to reflect on David and David's life. And David was a great man. Started with such a humble beginning. As a youth in Lived at home with all the brothers in the tradition, sort of help us to understand a little bit about his background. He was probably born out of wedlock, but another person. And accepted in the home and growing up with other kids whose parents were in the home. And some of us have grown up like that, right? Where you have to grow up. With other kids and other women. And so David began a life in a journey and started to keep the family flock. And it's interesting that you would expect the older one to do the keeping of the flock, but it was David who was chosen. Uh, Pierce that nobody wanted him to be home. David couldn't say in my father's house there were many nations because he didn't have it. They'd have a home. And I said that to bring it home to you and me. And we can identify with those type of experiences. And as I sat here, I reflected and said, I may be wrong, but perhaps. I may be wrong, but perhaps. When you have gone through such a journey in your life, you become more of a grateful person. But if you have never known how to wait for the next meal, or no meal at all, and if you would have to wait and contemplate how your school fees is going to be paid, that somehow you will have to lose a semester because your parent could not afford it, or because you were the older child and your parent told you you couldn't be educated, so we can educate the younger kids. And you've brought that all your life. You might just be, maybe, more of a grateful person when you come into the house of the Lord. That without the choir singing, you sing from the bottom of your heart in worship, in gratitude to God. Maybe your journey, my journey in life, especially the difficult ones. Brings you to a place of absolute gratitude. And now, could that be why David was a songwriter? Because in his psalms and songs were a reflection of where he came out of. And I don't know how many of his siblings who were at home with the father having a good time wrote a song. But out of his experience, he began to pen the psalm in worship to the Almighty God. Maybe, just maybe, for those of us who are truly grateful to God, it's a consequence of the road that you have walked. That in spite of it all, the Lord brought you through, and here you are today <laughs> in the presence of the Almighty God. And so David began the life and now he is married, he is king, he has got a good life set up. But there were happenings in David's life that somehow you would think was an aberration shouldn't have happened. He was such a great man, loved by so many and loved by God. A man after God's own heart. Loved by God. But in 2 Samuel chapter 18 verse 33. 
see some emotions of David here expressed. Why? For his son Absalom had done some terrible things and somehow rebelled against his father. And so I began to reflect on how David was such a great person and, and a good person. Not just great, but good. And yet in his home, uh, strange things happen. Chapter 18, verse 33, is second Samuel. And the king was much moved and went up in the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went thus, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. Would God that I had died for thee, oh Absalom, my son, my son. A cry of a father has been emotionally hurt. Deranged emotionally, and he began to cry. I wish I die on the behalf of my son that my son might leave. But his son rebelled against him. In my father's house are many measures. And I began to think that David was not called to be perfect father. But to be a present father. Perfect. You all male and female sitting here. Their boys and girls. You may not have a perfect father. But perhaps he was present. In your life. And that's still. A place of gratitude for you. That God has put somebody in your life. That may not be perfect. But is present. So David was not by no means. A perfect man. He has his flaws and failings. And part of it is what we see. In the behaviors of his children. But he was present. So, ladies and gentlemen, and especially gents who are here today, God wants me and you to be present. And what does that mean? To be present. The quality of my presence and the quality of your presence is what might save the day. And while we struggle to provide, we must not forget our priesthood. Flowers through this world. In multi tasks like the pastor that I just described in all of the place trying to do so much, but must not forget our priesthood. That we are priests unto the Lord. To serve him. To worship him. To give him that glory. That is due to his name. And to lead by that example. That not only our children we emulate. But those around us. Who see the glory of God. In your life. In my life. And now just think about it. What is the quality of presence. That you bring into a place. What is the quality of presence that you brought here today? While you are in the presence of the Almighty God. What is that quality of presence? Is your mind in so many things? Are you on your phone? Distracted? Are you somewhere else right now? Other than this place. What is the quality of your presence that you bring into a place, into a relationship, male or female? What is the quality of your presence? What makes the difference is the quality of our presence. Whether we be with God 
Whether we be with our children, whether we be with our spouses, whether we be with our friends, is the quality of presence that you bring in. And we must celebrate that quality of presence rather than our expectation of perfection. Never forget that sign that we had the student in the farmer back in DC. I said it so many times because I never forget it. Perhaps we could bring it back here. <laughs> I'll put it in my office. And the sign says that be patient with me for the Lord is still working on me. Some of us were perfect people. You might need to go to heaven to find them. But it's the quality of the presence that he or she brings to the moment. And not just the provision, but the priesthood that we bring to the moment. Jesus said we are priests and kings of the Lord. And today we are here in the presence of the Lord. What do priests do? Priests come to worship. And offer sacrifice of praise. What is the quality of your sacrifice of praise? When you come to my father's house. What is the quality of your praise and your worship? What is the quality of your praise and worship outside of this place? Because you can't live with you the house of the father. The presence of the Lord comes with you daily. And, and, I, and as I reflect on David, David should not be in competition. Because it was not. When Absalom rose up against him, and David was a warrior. David, David was a man of war. He, he's been fighting all his life, whether it be the lions or the bears or Goliath. And so many more, he was. But Absalom raised a ragtag army against David. And David said, rather than crush this rebellion, I'll get out of town. And David left. Left the palace. Left home. To preserve his son. So he was not in competition. Life is not all about competition. It's about complimenting. Complimenting. Especially in relationship. Home relationship. Work relationship. Church relationship. Is complimenting. Well, there are healthy competition. You know, kids run and try to win the race. Those are healthy. Kills kids. All of us put in more so we can excel in what we do. Do that good. But have some negative and those with negative connotations. So it's not about that. It's about complementing our different gift and giftings and recognizing that the Lord has made us all different. And one of the things we say is our faces are different so our needs are. Yes it is. All of our faces are different. Not every single person. Not all of us, however closely resemble we may look, there are still features in us that's different. And there are behaviors in us that's different. But rather than being in a competitive mood, let us understand that we complement ourselves as we try to, to the best of our ability. To make our father selves a glorious place to be. So in closing the day, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying is, it's not all about looking for the perfect behavior, but the quality of presence that he or she brings. And we celebrate not, not so much as the provision, but the priesthood. We celebrate that. 
and not so much as a competition, but the fact that we complement each other. As we come together in the brotherhood. So let's reflect on these things as we celebrate today. But there's a common piece to this message. That regardless where you all came from, where we all came from. We're in my father's house. Which is what Jesus talked about. In my father's house. There are many mansions there. If it were not so, he said, I would have told you. Let us bow our heads as we pray. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nation.